Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're talking about corner warping. Yep, it's that one thing that you will experience if you're printing with higher temperature filaments, and all of a sudden, after a 13 and a half hour print, your model just detaches from the build plate because it peeled up in the corners. So today we're going to be talking about the what, the why, and the how. What it is, why it happens, and how to fix it. Well, what is it? Well, corner warping is when the build plate starts to peel up around the corners of your model and usually around sharp edges, disattaching or ruining that part of the model, not squaring it off and not making it asymmetrical because let's face it, all of us are perfectionists. Why does that happen? Well, it happens because of thermal dynamics. There's a lot of factors that go into this. It could be a uh, environmental issue, where you place your actual printer, how you have it closed, if you have a heated chamber. I'm not even going into if you have a heated build plate because let's face it, it's 2025. We all have heated build plates at this point. Let's start with the placement of your printer. Placement of your printer is very, very important inside the room that you have set up and dedicated for your printer. If you have it underneath an AC vent, probably not the best place. Have it next to a draft, move it somewhere. If you cannot avoid these environmental factors, put it in an enclosure, okay? You can, you can put it in a cheap Amazon enclosure, usually with a thermal barrier. That's probably the best. Or you can actually go really, really expensive and buy an enclosure specifically designed for it. Yes, Ricky, I'm talking. There we go. Okay, Ricky's. you want to say something to the camera? No? Camera shot. Got it. Okay. Stay down there and quack. Anyways, um, but you can go as expensive as getting a $300 enclosure. And enclosures vary in factors based upon the type of building materials that they're made with, whether they have a filtration system built into it. So you have different options out there. But if you cannot avoid the placement, try using an enclosure. Okay, so there's, there's three of the factors that we can do. Now, if you... If you don't want to go through the process of building or buying an enclosure, you have a heated build plate, and you can't avoid the placement of your printer, well, now you can just slice smart. All the slicer software out there has these features built into it. All right, so let's head on over to the build plate and see what I'm talking about. All right, so on the build plate, I have a simple model. This one tends to have issues every single time I print it. This is just a simple articulated arm with little ratcheting gears. It has a lot of mass here inside the center, and we'll get to that here in a second. And then it has this thin little area right here, but it is somewhat tall. That's where the issues start to come into play. What happens is as you build in height in those layers, the bottom layer that's on a heated bed uh, is a little warm. In the midsection, it starts to cool down faster than the build plate area. When that happens, that midsection starts to contract. It will either split at the layer lines, or if it's a PETG uh, or ASA, it's not really going to split, but it's going to peel your print right off of the printer bed, right on these little corner areas, usually where it's thinnest or the sharpest. So to avoid this, try rounding off all your models round off all the edges and you want to chamfer the edges just a little bit so that's going to help along with that use a glue stick that always helps but if you can't avoid any of that the print will start to peel right at this section here and that's because of thermal dynamics it starts to cool down in the midsection the midsection starts to pull at the bottom section bottom section stuck to the printer bed printer bed's going to pull at the weakest part and that's the thinnest points so to fix this, what we're going to do in the top right hand corner, we're going to hit brim and then we're going to hit slice. And on my keyboard, I'm using command R. So what this is doing is this is laying down layers on the outside of your model. By doing this, it's going to have better adhesion. Please keep in mind, this is not physically attached to your model when you are looking at the slicer. Okay, you will have a small space, and that space is defined if you hit uh, Command 2 on your keyboard and then go down to Skirt and Brim. You will see that that space is defined by this option down here. It says Brim Separation Gap. 
if you find that this spacing is not attached whenever you are printing and it's still causing curling issues, you can still edit this to be less than 0.1. I would do 0.08. Do factors of 0 0.02 at a time, just a, a portion of the width of your nozzle, not the full full width. So by doing that, I'm, I'm reducing it by 0 0.02 millimeters. Now what's going to happen is as you get that first layer squish, it will push up against your, your print just a little bit. So you will have a little bit of post-processing to deal with. If it's getting too much squish, then start to separate that model from the brim by adding as opposed to subtracting. That's one way of holding your object down to the build plate. Now what you will also notice, this is only on the outermost portion of your model. If you have a section that's enclosed and it's also causing issues because you have say little spikes on the inside here that are supposed to be attached to the build plate, you can change it to outer and inner. And now when you reslice, all those little sharp edges that you had that were possibly causing you issues, they're going to be supported as well. All right, so that is the brim. So if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and like, subscribe, do all the other things that all the other YouTubers tell you to. It's gonna help my, my analytics. If you don't know anything about YouTube, they don't push it out. If people don't view it, they don't watch it. Thank you, yes. Apparently she just wants to bite my back, okay. Now you are in the shot. Is there anything that you want to say? Just you just gonna quack? Okay, we're we're just gonna leave it at quack. She doesn't talk, but when she does, it's it's a quack. Can I have a kiss? Okay, that's her saying. We'll see you next time.